the title of the message is uh, Humility and Holiness. Holiness is linked with humility. The true holiness, hallelujah, the true righteousness is in humility. Hallelujah. As uh, the last week, like I was meditating on certain things and uh, this came into my heart. Holiness, holiness means people think only the, you know, uh, lustful things, the uh, you know, works of the flesh, defilement, and all these things. <coughs> Self-righteousness also is unholy. Hallelujah. Whatever, wherever God is not there, Hallelujah. Holiness is not there. Hallelujah. So to define holiness, absence of God is unholiness. Hallelujah. According to what the Lord has taught me. Wherever godly nature is not there, holiness is not there. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus found in all the religious people. He was not contented. He was not happy. Hallelujah. About the religious people. As I was thinking, like, you know, how Christian then is under the sway of the enemy, deception of the enemy. They really do not understand the meaning of true holiness. Hallelujah. So we have to really work on that in our personal lives. It's not, you know, uh, holiness means we have been meaning not strive. All that we require is humble heart, humble spirit. Let's, uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11 and verse 29. Please read. Take my yoke upon you. Yeah. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me. And learn from me. For I am gentle. For, Jesus says, for I am gentle. And lowly in heart. And lowly in heart. And you will find. And you will find. Rest for your soul. Rest for your soul. What can we learn? Humility. None other than our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Only from me you can learn. The Lord says, For I am gentle and lowly when in heart. Not with an outward appearance. Hallelujah. So lowly in heart. From in the within the heart. Lord remained, Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ remained, hallelujah, humble in his heart. Hallelujah. And then the Lord says, then you will find rest for your souls. Many Christians are without, sometimes they are without, without peace of God in them. They are troubled within them. They are disturbed, often troubled. So we have to learn from Jesus. Hallelujah. We have to take upon his yoke means we have to come totally under the sub submission to the Lord. Hallelujah. And to the subjection of the Lord. And when you are, that is only be hum humbling ourselves. Coming totally, and yes Lord, tell me Lord. Like that, only then we can learn from him. Hallelujah. Otherwise, we can learn from the other person. The enemy is always there to dictate terms to people. So there are two forces that are operating in the world. Gods, as we saw last week, it is foolishness in the sight of the world. The way the Lord speaks, the Lord asks us to be humble. In the sight of the world, it's foolishness. Whereas, the enemy teaches the people, oh, what about your self-esteem, you know, your status, your prestige and your egoism. All these things he feeds people, the prejudice. Hallelujah. And people are totally giving room for the enemy, the opposite power, the negative force, which is satanic. Hallelujah. Without their knowledge, Christians, I'm talking about God's people. So we have to be very careful. The Lord says, learn from me. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. I am gentle and lowly in heart. So, 
this is not a holy humbleness like you know being this humility uh, we are, we are not uh, we have to exercise it not physically but at heart hallelujah in the heart we have to exercise this humility hallelujah we have to practice it in heart first that means through our meditations our thought levels hallelujah our our our, our desires all these things we have to practice it in the heart then only it has to come out in action amen then only we be a genuine christian hallelujah then only we can eat fruit according to the heart of our lord so no other person can set a best example than our lord jesus christ uh, that we can see up for the humility uh, Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 onwards if you read please read Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 onwards who being in the form of God yeah Jesus being in the form of God did not consider it robbery did not consider it robbery to be equal with God to be equal with God but made himself but made Jesus made himself of no reputation. Mm, yes. He had to. He was very <coughs> possible. He made himself of no reputation. He stripped off himself. Hallelujah. From all the reputations. Hallelujah. He says, no, no, no. This won't work in my life. He made himself of no reputation. Taking the form of a bond servant. Taking a form, taking the form of not only a servant but bond servant. And coming in the likeness of men. And coming in the likeness of men. And being found. And being found. In appearance as a man. In appearance as, ma as a man. He humbled himself. He humbled himself and became obedient and became obedient to the point of death to the point of death even the death of the cross even the death of the cross till when he had he humbled himself till even to the even the death of the cross to the point of death he became obedient he humbled himself to become obedient first if there is, we are not going to humble, if there is not going to be humility in us, we cannot obey God's voice. We will always rebel. Our spirits will rebel. We will always want to have our own ways. We will not be able to yield to God. That's why this humility, humbleness is very, very essential in a Christian's life. That should be in the heart, not outward. So, we have to really uh, give uh, so much of you know meditation on this. Uh, may our messages have been listening to the sermon. It will help you. More than that, we have to exercise. That's what I felt personally in my life. So till when, to the point of death, he humbled himself. How much he had to go through sufferings, humiliations, degrading things. Everything he endured because of the humility. Hallelujah. He was lowly in heart. But the enemy oh, makes people to boast about so many things in the world. Jesus, right from his birth, he was born in a stable. He was born in a carpenter's family. Hallelujah. And he was moving among the sinners and fishermen. But in his name, people are posting a lot. They can't they write, my boss is a carpenter. So your boss and our boss, is, he was a carpenter. He's no more a carpenter. Hallelujah! So what is there to post? I was thinking, nothing. But even if we do not want to post about anything, the enemy will always want us to do that. So that we will, you know, uh, come away from the right track, deviate from the right track, go on the wrong track in the name of God, in the name of Jesus. That's the danger. Derailed. We'll be derailed. So we have to be all the more careful. 
So Jesus is the best example. He humbled himself to the point of death. Even the death of the cruel cross. That's why Apostle Paul writes over here previous prior to this, all these verses, verse 5. Let this mind be in you. Let this mind, how Jesus exercised, how Jesus practiced, this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Let us have this mind. Let us practice this mind. Hallelujah. Let us exercise this mind in us. That was in our Lord Jesus Christ. So only then we will resemble Him. Amen. The connectivity with Jesus Christ will be there. Hallelujah. We can derive that essence from Him. Otherwise, we don't possess this nature automatically. If you are going to possess the other nature, the connectivity will be with the other one. So that day, much danger is there lies in, you know, Christian life. People are not aware of it. So we have to understand this. That's why Apostle Paul says uh, in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14. Please read. But God forbid, but God forbid, Galatians 6 14. Yeah, God forbid that I should boast, that I should boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom, yeah, the by world, whom the world has been crucified to yeah, me, yeah, and I to the world. Apostle Paul says, God forbid. <coughs> That I should boast, except only one thing I will boast about, he says, in the cross of our, our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. God forbid that I should boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means, see, Apostle Paul was a, such, a, uh, such a notable man. He was not an ordinary man. He was a Pharisee, learned man. Uh, in those days, he sat at the feet of the Manuel and learned. And historians say that is equivalent to, you know, uh, some big universities like Oxford and Harvard and etc. And also, uh, history says about him that he was, and he was a crow for the nine and a half crows or something they estimate in those days. So that person, he says, when he had an encounter with Jesus Christ, I was also thinking like this. When Apostle Paul, when Jesus, uh, you know, uh, met Apostle Paul, after that he would have felt so very miserable because he, in his time, Peter was there, Jacob was there, all the disciples of Jesus, they were there. So how much you would have felt miserable uh, about, you know, missing Jesus personally. He would have been a Pharisee. He would have been, you know, learning maybe about all the scriptures but missing out the real Jesus on the earth. How much you would have felt miserable. That's why now when he had an encounter with Jesus, he just started grabbing him like anything. He, said, he says over here, how in, in Philippians 3rd chapter we know, I count everything but loss for that, to acquire the excellence of knowledge of Christ Jesus. By any means, I want to attain the resurrection of life. Hallelujah. By any means, somehow or other. He says, hallelujah. That much, you know, fervency was there in the life of Apostle Paul. That's why he says, oh, I am not, I do not want to boast about my past life. I do not want to boast about anything but about the cross of Jesus Christ because Hallelujah. No other person can do the job. Hallelujah. Taking up the cross, taking up the sins of people, of the whole world, it is for the whole world. But the world refuses to understand him, know him, through its own knowledge as we saw last year, last week. So, and whoever comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ on the cross, they will also experience it. God forbid 
that I should post except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified to me and I to the world so I cannot post about the world, the world cannot post about me. Hallelujah. The love, the cross of Calvary. No one person on the earth can do that. No father, no mother, no, no friends can do that for us. Hallelujah. Pastor um, Ajit was reading out to me like in the news some um, musician died and all that. No, he was sharing like uh, his testimony. He says it seems when he was a small boy, he and his mother, they planned to commit suicide it seems. So when he was a small boy, that much poverty in their family. So they were planning to, you know, fall into a well or something like that and they were planning to do that. They went, they went, they went uh, near to the well. The mother asked the boy to jump. The boy said, no, 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 you jump first. What have, What if you don't jump after they jump? So their uncle came by that side and they got sick. They got they rescued. So it's non believer okay? I'm saying, this is the love of the worldly, you know, relationship. But Jesus is not like that. You stay alive as I feel. As the love of Jesus Christ. Not alive, alive forever. Amen. This is the love of Jesus Christ. That's why Apostle Paul says, God forbid, if I post about anything, the only thing that I would post about is about the law, cross of my Lord Jesus Christ. No other person can do that for me. Hallelujah. So it says, only about the cross of Jesus Christ I will post. Other than that, I will remain humble. That means I will remain humble. Amen. The only thing that I am permitted or I will be boasting about is about the cross. Sorry. Jeremiah 9 23. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Let not the wise man. Let not the wise man. Glory in his wisdom. Glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man. Let not the mighty man. Glory in his might. Glory in his might. Nor let the rich man. Nor let the rich man. Glory in his riches. Glory in his riches. But let him who glories. Let him who glories. Glory in this. Glory in this. That he understands. Oh, that he understands. And knows me. And knows me. That I am the Lord. That I am the Lord. Exercising. Exercising loving kindness, loving kindness, judgment, judgment, and righteousness, righteousness in the earth, in the earth. For in these, for in these, I delight, I delight, says the, the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah! The Lord's delight is in this: that every one person should glory in this, what that he understands and knows God. Hallelujah! It is not, it is difficult to worldly wisdom to understand and know him. It is so very easy for simple, even small children will be able to understand God. Hallelujah! When we have childlike faith, we will be easily be able to understand God. That's why we need to remain humble, to understand him and know him personally. Why the humility, why humbleness the Lord requires? <coughs> Only then we will be able to know him understand him, personally have some you know interactions with him he will give us keep giving us the enlightenment hallelujah we keep renewing our ways and lives hallelujah and that leads to transformation so the lord says oh he has to boast about this that he understands and knows me the one and only true living god what a great privilege when people are not aware of this, they are so much, they are di diverted and directed towards so many other things in the name of God. But I am being directed directly towards the one and only true living God. I am a blessed person, I am a privileged person. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. I am able to know that, I have come to know the one and only true living Savior. Hallelujah. How many millions of people are there in the world? But why me? Hallelujah. God has earmarked to know him. To, he keeps 
you know, uh, teaching me about him, revealing himself through many ways, trying to reveal himself. But let us not be ignorant about it. Amen. Let us make use of the opportunity. Let us grab the opportunity when it has been given to us. Let us not take casually. It will not always be available. When it is available, we have to make use of it, away. When God comes and comes and comes and comes, tries to show himself, reveal himself, yes Lord, that's how I, I got. Though I was brought up in a Christian family, but at the age of 20 only, oh hallelujah, glory to God, I had to you know, personally come to know of the Lord. And that day onwards, till day, that's what I was telling this youth, in this 50 years, I am like this as if a new, I'm a new convert, a new believer. Imagine how I would have been in the age, at the age of 20. Hallelujah! That much fervent we have to be. We will be calm if you only taste Him, really understand Him, really, hallelujah, glory to God, experience Him. For which He is always ready, He is always available. We have to open ourselves to Him. Hallelujah! And also, Apostle Paul continues to say, Hallelujah, how we have to uh, remain humble. I'm talking about humility versus holiness, how it leads to holiness. Humility leads towards holiness. Haughtiness takes, it, takes us away from holiness. Hallelujah. So only, that's why Jesus said, set a, set a best example. In every aspect of his life and his glory, he remained, hallelujah, humble. Why? We know Romans 8, chapter 3rd verse, he came in the form of sinful flesh. To remain sinless, hallelujah, to remain sinless. The other day, first, that it was purely saying that man is not doing something. That man, that my rich man, that son of man, <laughs> he's keeping going. Why are you saying he's son of man? Until he works in my life, I call him son of man. Purely I'm saying. He's son of God, he's son of man. Hallelujah. I was wondering some other man. He immediately said that son of man. Sometimes, you know, they become so uh, personal with Jesus and they expect so much, so many things from Him because they, they, they don't want anything from the world but from Him only. Even that if you keep silent, uh, like uh, sometimes, you know, it, uh, it really bothers us and God is silent. So that's why it was something like that you were saying, I didn't know, I remember that. So why I'm saying, it became in the form of sinful flesh. And to remain sinless, Jesus, right from his birth, till the death on the cross of Calvary, he remained up. In between, he exhibited, like, you know, how he washed the feet of his disciples, wiped it. Oh, he had to exercise that, so that the pride should not come. The boasting should not come. So then and there, then and there, then and there, he practiced, practiced, practiced in reality, lowly in heart. When people came to make him a king, he moved away from that place, disappeared from that place. Whenever he did miraculous healing, he said, let it not be made known to public. Hallelujah, keep it to yourself. So that fame, that name, that will direct the path, his vision, was to go to the cross and to die. So the enemy will try all his trickeries and many people fall up, pray for that in Christianity, in ministry, in Christianity. Hallelujah! Whenever the enemy offers so much, you know, uh, beautiful things or honor, pride, pray fame, and you know, riches and so many things he says, he bargains off, continually often. Uh, he always will bargain with God's people who are alive, alive, alive in the Lord. He will always try to manipulate 
In the name of God, do everything, but not don't go the right direction. Oh, no humility, no humbleness. That's why you you don't see Christ-like nature. Hallelujah. So how much we have to really wake up from our spiritual slumber and practice in our heart. Hallelujah. It's very difficult, you know. And we done then we immediately said, Lord, why should I meditate on uh, or people who do harmful things to them? Then I said, Lord, why should I meditate on imperfect people? Fill my heart. Let my meditation of my heart be full of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. When I said that before come before starting the service, oh I felt the fire presence of God in my heart. Hallelujah! Sometimes we'll be working and we'll be doing things. My, our mind will be working hard, <laughs> meditating on things which are not healthy, not sinful thing, but even the evil thing, not even evil thing, ordinary uh, things other than God, try to fill our minds and hearts. That's the entry for the enemy. The next step, he will bring the evil. The next step, he will bring the lust. The next step, like that, he will start invading the lives of God's people. So that very careful we have to be in the entry of what is entering our heart, our mind. Hallelujah! That's why Apostle, when Jesus also rebuked Peter, right? Peter, you are not mindful of things of God, but you are mindful of things of men. And we are mindful of things of men. He did not say, Peter, Satan, get thee behind me, Satan. He fills the mind with things of men. So there is no room for things of God to occupy. God's children, that very careful we have to be. So, Christ washed the feet of his disciples and wiped it. Hallelujah. And many, many areas he, he had to really to remain humble. That's what he also questioned people in. Who, 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 who can convict me of sin? in me. Hallelujah. Convict of sin in me. Who can point out your finger at me as a sinner? He asks. Hallelujah. And even in Hebrews 4 chapter, the word of God says, uh, Hallelujah. Glory to God. He was tempted in all points as we are, but it without sin. Hallelujah. And God made him who was without sin a sin. Hallelujah. And so many things. How was it possible Jesus for you had come in the form of sinful flesh? But you remain sinless. He always, there are many uh, causes for that. He always remained with God, constant touch with God the Father. And constant touch with the God the Father means he came as what? Bond servant, not as the son of God. He took upon him the form of God, a bond servant means whatever the father dictated. Simply not servant, but slave. Bond servant means slave. Like a slave, he was listening to God the Father and obeying his each and every word. Nothing was interrupting. Nothing did he entertain, allow in his life to interrupt. Hallelujah. To come between God the Father and him. He was very cautious. Whenever things tried to penetrate, he was alert. Immediately resisted them. Amen. Oh, that very careful. Like Jesus did that. He has already accomplished everything on the cross on our behalf. Only a small amount of exercise that we need to uh, practice in our lives. Hallelujah. As Jesus did, we did not do. He has already accomplished and finished off the enemy. But there is little left over is there which we have to finish it. Amen. We are not like puppets God is using. He has given us the self will Amen. So we have to do our part. Otherwise God is always ready to accept. The enemy is not ready to leave us. Amen. So we have to really be very, very careful about it. The humbleness that leads to holiness. You know from Luke's Gospel chapter 18, verse 10 onwards. He pray. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee. One a Pharisee. 
and the other a tax collector. The other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Oh, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself. Mm. God, with himself, God. I thank you. I thank you that I am not like the other man. I am not like the other man. Exhaustioner. Exhaustioner. Unjust. Unjust. Adulterous. Adulterous. Or even as this tax collector. Uh, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the and the tax collector. In, in a, the Pharisee student prayed thus within himself, with himself. <coughs> with himself. God, I thank you. Can you count how many eyes are there here? Pardon me? How many eyes? Five eyes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Five eyes. I thank you. I am not like this other man. I fast. I give. I possess. Lucifer also said this five eyes. In Isaiah 14. I will, I will, I will. That is why this pride, boastfulness is dangerous. This is not the quality of God. This is not the quality of our Lord Jesus Christ. This will not be a quality of God's people. I, in the name of God, he says, I pray. I am not like this adulterous, this, you know, people who are truly not humble in their heart. They'll be haughty. They will not be able to know who they are and what they are within themselves. They will just keep looking at other people. Oh, I'm not like an adulteress. Adulterer. I'm not like an unjust person. I'm not. They'll be busybodies poking their nose in other people's matters. They will not be, you know, analyzing their own lives. I'm not like the extortioner. I'm not like the death collector. Looking at other people's fault, fault finders. And another thing is, hallelujah, thinking low about others at heart. In heart, they think very low about other people. They may not express it, but in their heart they may think. I'm talking about religious people. Immediately they come to a conclusion, immediately they pass on judgment, immediately they say this and that. So, and he speaks and boasts about his religious activities. People boast about that. God is not at all interested in that. Hallelujah. Immediately Jesus rejected that. Hallelujah. And see, he says, I, he stood and prayed. That means he keeps see, seeing other people's matters, but his faults he's not able to understand, but he's able to understand only the good, so called good things which are not acceptable in the presence of God, accepted in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we may think, oh, I'm doing this, and one day I'll be like that, like, you know, I was thinking so many things, and I'm placing my own feet in the presence of God. Then I was wondering, why, Lord? Then immediately I, made, I thought, I may be contented with what I am. And I said, no, no, Lord, I made righteous through your precious blood. I made righteous by believing in you. When I said that, immediately God's presence started flowing in me. Hallelujah! When we do not totally rely and depend on the righteousness of God, Hallelujah, that brings the haughtiness in us without our knowledge. Hallelujah, and that gives room for the enemy to enter and take away the presence of God. Amen. So God has God's righteousness is vast, so much where. Our righteousness of doing this good and that good is it will not be acceptable. It will not be, you know, it is like the word of God calls it self-righteousness as filthy life in the eyes of God. Our righteousness without the righteousness of God. How much ever we do serve God, 
not depending on the righteousness of God. That means dependence on God, being humble before God. Amen. Not me, Lord, but you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because this is for our safety again, for the not the evil one to come. Hallelujah. His servants also will pose as the servants of righteousness. Second Corinthians 11 chapter. They will Satan's servants. They also act as servants of righteousness. So we have to be that very careful if we don't rely on the righteousness of God and this happens. So how much, you know, see you need not, all that, if we remain humble, we need not even meditate on all this. Automatically we will be going in the right path. So here, uh, the uh, uh, Pharisee speaks praise like this. But the tax collector, and then the Pharisee was not able to look into himself what was there in him. But when it came to John's Gospel 8 chapter, they brought uh, to Jesus an adulterous woman, caught her, who came? Uh, Pharisees and scribes. In John's 8 uh, chapter, we can go home and read. Uh, there they were condemning her and asking Jesus for the to pass on judgment on her, saying that Moses has said that we have to throw stones at the woman and we have caught her in uh, the act of adultery. What do you say? Jesus kept quiet. Then he wrote on the ground. After that he said, Anyone in of you who has no sin in you, so let him first throw the stone at her. The word of God says, every one of the Pharisees and scribes, they were pricked in their conscience. And they threw the stone down and went away without condemning that woman. Hallelujah! Till then, they were in their eyes very righteous person. When God opened their conscience, which they were not able to, no. Then they were feeling richer, miserable, I think. Because God judges a person according to what he is in the heart and in the mind. Hallelujah! When it comes to the church of Theatre, the Spirit of the Lord says, about when he speaks about the spirit of Jezebel, then he says, now people will know that I am the Lord who passes on judgment of God and but that I am the Lord who searches the heart of people. Hallelujah! And judge people accordingly. So nobody can escape, nobody can pose, nobody can, you know, uh, you know uh, dodge God. Hallelujah! That's what I was telling in the morning. So let us not Thank God in those days Jesus opened their conscience and made them to understand. What about us? If people are not going to go on the right path, in the day of judgment, when he opens the conscience and shows them who they are, they will say, Lord, I did do so much for you. I did so much, you know, I, I was regular in church attendance and, you know, in all religious activities. But the Lord would say, no, 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 you are condemned. Why? What for, Lord? The Lord will open the conscience and show them. Then there won't be any sin. Hallelujah! They have to accept the judgment. So that's dangerous, the deception of the devil in one's life. Hallelujah! In Christian's life, let us rely on the righteousness of God that leads to true holiness. True holiness. Amen. Not in the form of holiness. And we'll come back to Luke's Gospel 18. And we'll read about the tax collector. 13th verse. And the tax collector. And the tax collector. Stand, standing afar off. Standing afar off. Would not so much as to raise his eyes to the heaven. Oh, see this? The real sinner. Uh, the pen. The inward. God is interested in the inward man. So, this tax collector standing afar. He says, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven. He was so hurt in his spirit, so hurt in his heart. He would not raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
he was not covering up his sin, but he was exposing himself before God. Hallelujah! That is humbling ourselves, accepting who we are. Hallelujah! Telling him who we are. Be merciful to me, a sinner. This is me, Lord. This is my truth. And asking for God's, and he knows that. Asking for what? God's mercies. The unmerited favor of God is what? The grace of God. The, the definition for the grace of God is the unmerited favor of God. We are not worthy to receive the mercies or the favor of God. And in Christ Jesus we receive the mercies of God. Hallelujah. And this favor of God, God says, if you only humble before Him, James 4 said, He gives grace to the humble. God resists the proud. Hallelujah. The pride again brings, uh, you know, unholiness. Is big, uh, one of the reasons for that is pride. Hidden pride or some covered pride or some, some kind of package, something will be there in us if we don't exercise. Hallelujah. This humility of Christ in heart. We have to keep meditating that and keep practicing. If you just relax, this will creep into us. Hallelujah. So, we have to understand, he, he calls out to God, be merciful to me a sinner. Then the Lord says, verse 14, I, I tell you, this no. man, this man, went down to his house, went down to his house, justified, justified, rather than the other, rather than the other. He what? went home justified. He went home holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rather than the other person who was boasting about himself. Yeah. For everyone who exalts himself, for everyone who exalts himself, will be humbled. Will be humbled. And he who humbles himself, or he who humbles himself, will be exalted. Will be exalted. Humble himself where? Humble himself where? In heart. Many people try to do it outwardly. That is again another hypocrisy. We should not have that. Uh, you know. I was so hypocritical. They try to act so humble and all that, but they are not. So, we have to. He who humbles himself will be exalted. That means he who always meditates about humility, the humble nature of our Lord Jesus Christ in heart, automatically the Lord will exalt that person. And even if the exaltation comes, they will not be posting about it, they give all the glory to God, all the praises to God. Hallelujah! They keep glorifying God. Amen. So to that extent, God wants to form His children. Because He loves us, He teaches us. Amen. So we have to understand this. You can see like how um, Luke's Gospel chapter 7, a sinful woman in that uh, place when she heard that Jesus had come to that place, she came running and stood behind him. Oh, hallelujah, fell at his feet, wept bitterly and washed his feet with her tears, wiped his feet with her hair, hallelujah, glory to God, and anointed his feet with a costly um, oil. And uh, what did she do? With the fragrant oil and he, she continually kisses his feet. Immediately, where? In a place where Jesus was invited for a dinner and he was a Pharisee. When this woman did this, immediately the Pharisee speaks to himself. Hallelujah, glory to her. What did he say? This man. Verse 39, right? Yeah. yeah. This man, if he were a prophet. Yeah, this man, if he were a prophet, would know. Would know who and what manner of who woman. Who and what manner of woman this is this is this is who is touching yeah, him. Who is touching him? For she is a sinner. For she is a sinner. He is putting a label on her, stamping on her. Putting a stamp on her. 
this man, if he were, he, would, he called Jesus as Baba, come, oh, come to our house for dinner. But in heart, what he says, this man, if he were a prophet, he should be knowing what sort of woman this is that is touching him. And Jesus even this is Simon, I asked you one question. One person, hallelujah, glory to God, there was a creditor who had two debtors, one owed 500 and denarii and the other 50. And uh, he freely forgave them both. Tell me therefore which of them will love him more? Then he answers, hallelujah, I suppose the one who he forgave the more, the 500 denarii person, only will love that creditor more because his uh, you know, debt was forgiven the more. Jesus says, you have rightly said, you have rightly said that, you see, I, you see the woman, I entered your house, you gave me no water to wash my feet. But she was, she has washed my feet with her tears, wiped them with her hair, with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins which are many are forgiven. For she loved much. People who are really humble in heart can love the Lord more. Hallelujah! Because they are emptying themselves of all ungodly things, things that are unlike Christ, they are emptying at the feet of Jesus. I don't want anything that are not of God. Emptying and making room in their life to love God. Hallelujah! And she loved much and the Lord says, to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then verse 50, he says, Jesus tells the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Amen. Saved means what? You are made righteous. You are made holy. Go in peace. So simple is the formula of holiness. Hallelujah. So easy is the route to holiness. Remain humble before God. Remain a person who always can receive mercies of God. When Jesus sees you, oh, he should, he should be moved with mercy towards you. Hallelujah! For which we have to, when, when that can happen? When we remain humble in God, before God. God will always shower his mercies upon such a person. When the mercy, so the grace of God is upon that person, sin cannot have dominion over that person, according to Romans uh, 6 and 14. Hallelujah! If you are under the grace of God, sin shall not have dominion over you. It's not like fighting sin and you know doing... If you are under the grace of God, if you remain under the mercies of God, if you are a person, remain a person worthy to receive the mercies of God. The one quality is humbleness. Remain humble. And the grace of God is upon you. Automatically no sin can have dominion over you. It may try to come and try to do all sorts of gymnastics before you. But it cannot have dominion over you. Hallelujah! We know Jesus came to save sinners. His name is Jesus because he has come to save sinners. But in this area only Christians are so perturbed and troubled and disturbed and they don't have the real conviction and victorious life. So sad. Hallelujah! The reason being there, they don't remain under the grace of God. When they receive the salvation, immediately they go out of the grace of God they go in the human strength to live a Christian life which is not at all possible. Corinthians 15, verse, verse 8 onwards will be. Then last of all, then last of all, he was seen by me also. He was seen by me also. As by one born out of and as time. by one born out of due time. See, as I told you, Apostle Paul would have been 
you know, feeling miserable about missing Jesus when he was on this earth. So he was always trying to say, I am like a one who was born out of due time or premature to a baby. Hallelujah. He just starts, he was feeling very wretched about him. Mm. For I am the least of the apostles. What does he say here? Least. I am the least of the apostles. Last. Whatever Jesus taught, even his disciples in his time, they were not following. But Apostle Paul says, Jesus says, if anyone wants to be the first, let him be the least. Apostle Paul says here, I am the least of the apostles. Whom I am not worthy to be called an apostle. Oh, whom I am not worthy, he says. He has done so much of ministry, but he's saying, I am not worthy to be called an apostle. Now everybody puts title, I am so and so. <laughs> I am not worthy to be called an apostle. That's why every now and then we call him Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. Amen. I'm not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God then. But by the grace of God. But by the grace of God only. I am what I am. I am what I am. Mm. And his grace he towards says, me. It's the grace of God are the mercies. I always seek the mercies of God. Or always the secret of my success. He's not saying that we are trying, we have to derive from that. We have to get from <laughs> it. You know. Uh, he says, secret of my success is I always remain under the grace of God. I always rely on the grace of God, not on my human strength. Hallelujah! But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Yeah? And His grace towards me And His grace towards me was not in vain. And He also says, the grace that God bestowed upon me, I did not waste it. But I utilized it to the most. Amen. Amen. He was not going to take it for granted. But he was so sincere to the grace of God that was given to him. Hallelujah. Sometimes we people, you know, we try to question God or God. Oh, we try to do all 40 things. Wasting all the grace that's been given to us. But he says, the grace that was given to me was not in vain. He worked so very hard. He did not waste the grace of God. But you placed every ounce, every inch of the grace of God that was given to him. Amen. And then, but I labored more abundantly. I labored more abundantly. Than they all. Than they all. Yet, see this is again not a boastful word. I could read, they say, no, you should read between the lines. You should also know to read the between the lines in a good manner. Thinking <laughs> about himself, comparing with others, he says, I labored about them all, but yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. I mean, that means what he says, I labored more than all those people. He was so fervent for God, but for Jesus when he had the encounter, after the encounter. He says, these people, they walked with Jesus. They experienced Jesus, they ate with Jesus, they, they witnessed miracles of Jesus firsthand. But still they are just going to, they are sticking on to Jerusalem, Jerusalem. They are not willing to move any further for the cause of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah! In spite of having so much of you know, precious uh, experience with Jesus, these people are, why? Then he says, oh let me, I want to labor more for Jesus. And it's not me again, but the grace of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Apostle Paul humbled himself. That's why he was a mighty man of God. God used him. And because of Apostle Paul only, other disciples know they were just going around and in and around Jerusalem. But this Apostle Paul almost he covered whole world. Hallelujah. Tirelessly he worked for God. Hallelujah. The lie says, love of Christ constrains me, constrains me. And then we know about um, Mary, the mother of Jesus. She also humbled herself and God uh, highly favored when the angel of the Lord calls. Gospel chapter 1 and verse 27. Right? Uh, 28. And having come in, having come in, 
The angel said to her. The angel said to her, Rejoice. Rejoice. Highly favored one. Highly favored one. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed are you among women. And when so she she the angel calls her highly favored one. The highly the one who will receive more of grace and mercies of God. Blessed are you. Why? What did she say? When the angel of the Lord told her the plan of God in her life, she was betrothed to a man called Joseph. She was going to get married. She was waiting for that time. But something happened the other way. What happened? Hallelujah, glory to God. Please see. Uh, 38, verse 38. When the angel revealed the plans of God concerning her. 38. What was then it? Then Mary said. Answer. Mary said. Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Behold who? The maid servant. I am the maid servant. Whatever the Lord says. Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me. Let it be to me. According to your word. According to your word. The truly humble person will not think about themselves, their future, what will happen, how this will happen. They do not question or doubt God. Amen. He say, she says, Behold. I am, behold, the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word, Lord. Whatever you want to perform in my life, let it be God. I will not question you. I will not doubt you. That will be for good. That is for good, actually. Yes. What we plan for ourselves only is disastrous. Hallelujah. That is why she was called as highly favored one. You have found so much of grace in the eyes of God. You may be because you always wanted to do according to the word of God. According to what you are always willing to accept the plan of God. Amen. The result of which was what? Hallelujah. Glory to God. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, 35. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that Holy One whose deep be born will be called the Son of God. When you are humble, you will find favor with God. When you find favor with God or full of mercies of God, that which is born out of you will be the Holy One. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Romans 6.22 we know. Now, but now, having been set free from sin, having been set free from sin, the next step is this. This next step, people don't do it. Having been set free from sin, and having become slaves of God, having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness. You have your fruit to you have it, right? You need not earn it. You have it. Become slaves of God. That means always be. Contented with God and under God. Having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness. And the end. And the end. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Hallelujah. Or that which is possible. Everlasting life to inherit that. Here we have to have the fruit of holiness. For which we have to give ourselves as slaves of God. For which we have to be delivered from the sins by confessing our sins. And repenting towards God, repenting from our sins, turning towards God, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you will be delivered. After being cleansed by from sins and setting free, after, after being set free from sins, that the next step people should do become the slaves of God means not under the dictatorship, under the protection of God. Under the protection of God only is holiness possible. If we go out of the protection, in our own way, in the form of Christianity, we'll be lost. Hallelujah. In the word of God says, Hebrews 12, 10, The Lord chastises people to become partakers of His holiness. He's so much concerned, He's willing to partake with us His holiness. What a great God. 